The Hollywood sign is a cultural icon and probably one of the most famous landmarks in the world. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Hollywood sign of your own, complete with custom text that you can change to say whatever you like. Before we'll start, I'll just give a quick shout out to my Patreon, where you can find the same file for this video and all my other tutorials. I've got lots of great bonus content planned for my Patreon account and it's the best way you can support this channel. To make the hills, we're going to use the ANT landscape add-on. It comes with Blender, you just need to enable it in the add-on preferences menu. Under the add mesh panel, you'll see this new option called landscape. By default, it creates a basic mountain. Change the preset type to cliff and set the X scale to 5. Change the strata type to be smooth and then lower the number of stratas to just 1. You can play with the random seed number until you get a cliff that looks nice. Once you've found a good one, go into edit mode and select the bottom edge. Enable proportional editing and pull the cliff out slightly to make the drop less steep. You can also go into sculpting mode and further refine the mesh if you like. I was pretty happy with the generated base mesh that I got so I didn't really make many changes. Next we need some lighting. I used the Easy HDRI add-on to load in images from my image library. A link to that add-on and the HDR image that I used in the description. For the ground material I used a texture set that I downloaded from texturehaven.com. You'll find a link to that below. Feel free to use a different texture set if you like. Any dry looking soil should probably work pretty well. If you've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can just select the principal node and hit Ctrl, Shift and T. That'll automatically add your texture set complete with all the correct nodes. You can see that we've got no details in the texture here and that's because we haven't got a proper UV map. Go into edit mode and select the whole mesh with A, then press U and unwrap. Change the map scale to something more appropriate. Anywhere between 25 and 15 will probably look pretty good with most texture sets. You can see that this texture also has a displacement node, but we can't actually see the effect of the displacement at the moment. What we need to do is add a subdivision surface modifier and set it to about three subdivisions. Then we need to go into the setting panels of the material and we need to change the displacement type from bump only to displacement and bump. This is going to add some micro displacements using that displacement texture. Since it is a micro displacement, you will only see the effect when you're in Cycles rendered view. Now we have some problems to fix. Firstly, the displacement is way too strong. Turn the strength down on the displacement node to 0.1 or less. The second problem that we've got is that the micro displacements are pushing the whole mesh down. If we don't fix this now, it'll cause problems later. Just play with the mid-level number on the displacement node until the ground aligns with that yellow outline. I found that for my scene, a value of 0.2 worked perfectly. Now we've got our landscape in place, let's make the sign. Add a new text object to the scene. By default, it'll be lying flat on the ground. So press X and then 9, 0 and enter on the numpad to flip it up the right way. Press tab to go into edit mode, delete whatever the text says, add in whatever text you like. Fun fact, the sign originally said Hollywood Land from 1923 until 1949. It was erected by a local businessman who was trying to advertise his new housing development. In order to match the Hollywood sign, we're going to need to download a font from the internet. I'll link that in the description. In the text object settings, find the font that you've just downloaded and you should get something like this. By default, the font automatically offsets the text vertically to make it look a little bit wavy. We don't want that so we're going to fix it. Right click on the text, convert it to a mesh. Move the letters around by in edit mode selecting one edge of the letter then pressing Ctrl and L and that'll select the whole letter and then you can move it around with the G key. Make sure you've turned off proportional editing while you do this otherwise you'll mess up all the other letters. Once you've got all your letters aligned move and scale the mesh so it's on the top of the little ridge on the cliff. Now might be a good time to set up some basic camera position as well. I use a fairly high focal length of about 60 millimeters for the camera. High focal length numbers tend to add a sense of scale to larger objects, while lower numbers are usually used for close-up photography. Select all the letters in edit mode by hitting A and then just extrude them back a little bit to add some thickness. If you look at photos of the actual Hollywood sign from above, you can see that the letters are actually all slightly misaligned. So select some of the letters and just move them around a little bit. 
Not so fun fact, in the 1930s a British actress called Peg Entwistle killed herself by diving off the letter H. Anyway, once your letters are aligned, it's time to make the frame. This part isn't rocket science, just add a cube and scale it so it's longer than one of the letters. In edit mode, duplicate the mesh around a few times with shift D. Use scale and rotate to make the shape of the basic frame. Once that's done, just go into object mode and duplicate a few times and place it around behind all the other letters. Finally, just move the frames to be just behind each letter on the sign. The sign material itself is really easy. If you look at the sign close up, you'll see that it's actually corrugated, it's not flat. So we're going to add a bump node into the normal input of the principal shader. And then we're going to add a wave texture node going into the height input of the bump. Crank up the scale of the wave node until you've got loads of lines. I think I went for about 80. Then reduce the strength on the bump node to be about a third as strong as maximum. I use a color ramp node and a noise texture to add a little bit of dirt to the sign, but that's entirely optional. For the frame, just add a basic white material with a little bit of clear coat to make it look like paint. Our landscape is starting to take shape, but we need some grass. Hide everything in the scene, create a new plane, and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, just like we did with the text. In edit mode, scale it down, and then scale it on the z-axis. Move the mesh up until the bottom of the mesh is roughly aligned with the little orange dot for the origin. Use Ctrl and R to add a few loop cuts. Then grab the top edge and with proportional editing set to sharp mode, scale that edge in a little bit. That should give you the rough shape of a piece of grass. Press number pad 3 to go into the side view and then grab that and just move it around so you've got a little bit of a bend to the grass. In object mode, duplicate the grass a few times. Just randomly change the scale, the proportion and the rotation of all the blades of grass until you've got a nice clump of grass. Once that looks right, select all the blades of grass and then merge them together into one object using Ctrl and J. For the grass material, we're just going to use a colour ramp plugged into the colour input of the principal shader. Add a noise node and use that as the factor of the colour ramp. Give the principal shader a small amount of subsurface scattering and change the colour of the subsurface scattering so it's a lighter shade of kind of yellowish green. Once you've done that, duplicate your grass a few times, make some changes so you've got slightly different clumps of grass. Give each one a slightly different material as well, just with different shades of green and yellow. Select all of the grass objects and then press Ctrl and G to add them into a new collection, call that grass. Make sure that your grass objects are out of the way of the landscape, I just put them below the mesh. Add a particle system to your landscape mesh and set the type to hair. Change the render type to collection and then select the grass collection that we've just made. You can play with the scale and the scale randoms until it looks right. Right now the grass is just pointing straight out from the landscape and we want it pointing roughly up towards the sky. Enable the advanced checkbox at the top of the settings page and tick the box for rotation. Change the rotation type to be global Z and then play with the settings to get some random variation. Under the particle settings you'll see a subsection called children. Turn on interpolated. This basically adds loads of fake particles based on the position of the real particles you've created. It's a good way to add loads of extra particles to a scene without slowing Blender down. Play with the different numbers until that looks right. Once you're happy with the number of grass particles, you can lower the viewport display amount so it keeps Blender running smoothly. Now that our grass is in place, we need to alter the distribution of the particles. At the bottom of the particle settings, you'll find a drop down menu called textures. Add a new texture, then switch to the texture tab. Change the texture type to clouds, then enable the density checkbox. What this will do is it will distribute the particles based on a noisy cloud texture. You can play with the density amount to change how much influence the texture has on the distribution of the particles. Right now we've got loads of particles outside the camera wasting resources. Go to the texture painting editor and change it to weight paint mode. Click on the little green icon tab on the sidebar, that's the object properties panel. Create a new vertex group and call it grass paint. Now you can just paint under the mesh wherever you want the grass to appear. Anywhere you don't paint won't get grass. Once the painting's done, go back into the particle settings 
and under the drop down menu called vertex groups, just assign the new grass paint group that we've made to the density slot. You might have to lower the number of child particles that you created earlier at this point, since the grass is now covering a much smaller area, you won't need as many particles. Now we have the grass in place, let's make some bushes. Hide everything in your scene again and then create a plane. In edit mode, select everything and press M and then merge at sender. This will surely leave you with just a single vertex. With that one vert selected, hold down control and left click around the scene to make the basic shape of some branches. You can duplicate the branches and rotate them around to cut down on your work. Just make sure you select all the verts at the bottom and merge them to the centre too, otherwise the end result will look really strange. Nobody wants a weird looking bush. Add a skin modifier to the object. This will probably look really shit at first, but don't worry, we can fix it. Select every vert with A, and then in edit mode, use Ctrl and A while dragging just to scale that down, and it should start to look like a normal bush. With the proportional editing turn on, select the bottom verts and use Ctrl A again to scale it out and give some thickness to the stem of the plant. Do the opposite for the twigs at the end, make them really skinny. Make a simple leaf object from a plane, name it something like leaf. Don't worry about adding loads of details to this, just a few loop cuts on a plane should do the trick, you won't be able to tell the difference. Just make sure you move the whole mesh up in edit mode so the origin is at the bottom of the mesh, just like we did with the grass. Add a new hair particle system to the branches that we just made. Change the render type to object and select the leaf object that you've made. You will need to alter the scale and the scale random values just like we did with the grass. Turn on advanced mode, change the rotation type to global Z, then alter the rotation values to make the particles look a little bit less uniform. If you make more than one branch mesh, you can just copy over the particle systems from the first one. It's better to make several bush meshes if you can, otherwise they might all look a bit similar. Now the bushes are starting to look pretty realistic but we don't want any leaves on the stem of the plant. We can control where the leaves appear just like we controlled where the grass was placed on the landscape with vertex groups. We don't need a weight paint at this time though. We can just select the bottom verts of the mesh in edit mode then press Ctrl and I and invert the selection. Then we can create a new vertex group and just assign all those verts to the group. In the particle settings, go to the vertex and control the density just like we did with the grass adding in that group that we've just made. Give the bush a subdivision surface modifier and then apply it. If you hit the convert button in the modifier panel, Blender will convert all of those particles into their own individual mesh. You'll see loads of leaf particles appear on your list of objects. The bush object will still have its original particle system, so we're going to need to go into the particle system tab and just remove that. Then you'll be left with the branch mesh and loads of different particles. You can just select all of them and use Ctrl J to join them into a single particle. For some reason, joining all those meshes together made the leaf material look too light on my scene, so I just went in the shader editor and quickly darkened those down. Repeat the process for however many bush objects you've made, and then add every bush to a collection called bushes. Unhide the landscape mesh and give it a new particle system. Set the render type to collection and select the collection to the bush that we've just made. There's no need for any child particles here, we can use a fairly low number of particles. I think I used 90 or 100 in the final render. I also used that same weight paint map that I made for the grass to control the placement of the bushes. We don't need to put any bushes anywhere outside the camera. If your objects are all aligned in weird directions and you can't get them to go the right way, you may have to select the original meshes, go into edit mode and change the orientation in edit mode of the whole mesh. Just make sure that the bottom of the mesh is always aligned with the origin point once you're finished. It takes a little bit of trial and error sometimes to get this right, but you'll figure it out eventually. Fun fact, the original Hollywood sign was completely dilapidated by the 1970s. Nine different people donated $27,000 each to have the sign replaced, including Hugh Hefner who paid for the letter Y, and Alice Cooper who donated the second letter O. If you look at pictures of the real Hollywood sign, you'll notice there's a fence running around the top of Mount Lee. To create the fence, we're just going to add a cylinder to the scene, that's going to make our fence post. Copy the object, make it longer and thinner, rotate it 90 degrees, that'll be the top of the post. 
Go into edit mode and give it a few loop cuts as well because we're going to bend it slightly later. Join both the meshes together using Ctrl J. Add a plane to the scene and move it so it fits the basic shape of the fence. I like to leave a little bit of a gap on the bottom. Add some loop cuts going horizontally and some going vertically. I think I used about 20 in each direction. Then select all the faces with A. Go to faces and choose pork faces. Now select a vertical and a horizontal edge and go to the select menu. Under select similar you'll have an option for direction. If you click that, it'll select every horizontal and every vertical edge. Press delete and then dissolve those edges and that should leave us with this crisscross pattern. Add a wireframe modifier to the plane and lower down the thickness. Then you just need to apply the modifier, select all of the parts of the fence that you've made and join them together with Ctrl J. Next up, we're going to add an array modifier to the fence object. Increase the array count to something like 20. Then add a curve object and align that roughly with the fence. I used the path curve for this, but if you want to use a bezier curve or something else, it'll work just as well. Extend the curve until it's about the length of the fence. You'll need to right click on the curve and add a few levels of subdivision as well. Now we can select the fence and add a curve modifier, and then we can just select the curve that we've made as the curve object. Now if we select the curve and we edit it, you'll see that the fence copies the shape of the curve. Scale the fence down and then place it along the top of the cliff. Go into edit mode with the curve and just move the curve around so it roughly matches the shape of the curves of the top of the cliff. For the fence material, just give it a basic principal shader, set it to metallic and turn the roughness down a little bit. Okay, so now our Hollywood sign's looking pretty good, I think, and we're entering the final stretch. But there's just one thing missing and that's that weird tower object that's on the top of Mount Lee. Fun fact that tower is actually the LA Central Communications Facility. It handles all the radio traffic for the LAPD and the fire department. To make the tower, just add a cube and scale it along the Z axis to make it taller. Grab the top face and scale that down as well. Get rid of the top and bottom faces, we don't need those. Then add a few loop cuts to the mesh to make the basic shape of a frame. Use the pork faces to add some diagonal lines. Then use the wireframe modifier just like we did on the fence. I also turned on even thickness, relative thickness and boundary. For the tower material, add a texture coordinate node and a color ramp. Plug the color ramp into the color input of the principal shader and give it a few alternating colors. Plug the generated output of the coordinate node into a separate XYZ node then plug the Z output into a color ramp. Using the Z output of the coordinates O'Neill give us a vertical gradient. Make sure that you set the color ramp to constant mode, otherwise you'll get this weird blending in between the colors. The little satellite dishes around the tower are literally just squashed down cylinders, rotated and scaled into place. I gave them a slightly glossy white material and called it a day. I knew the top of the tower wouldn't be visible at all due to the angle that I was using, but if you want to make one, you can easily do that just using a few cylinders and a cube or two. Finally, just move the whole tower into place and you're ready to render this thing out. I added an empty object into the scene and I placed it just about where the sign is. This empty was going to be the focal point. In the camera sends, turn on depth of field and select the extra object as the focus. Play with the f-stop number to find the level of blur that you like. The lower the f-stop number, the more blur you're going to get. Don't go too overboard with the amount of blur, or you're going to start to cause this weird tilt shift effect where the sign will start to look like it's actually a miniature. Especially if you're like I am and you're making the sign smaller than real world proportions. Fun fact, the real Hollywood sign is actually pretty huge. Each letter is about 13 meters tall, which is like the height of a three story building. So now it's time to actually render out the scene. The subsurface scattering tends to be quite noisy. You can use denoising if you want, but I don't like how much that takes the details out of scenes like this, so I just wanted to render it with a higher sample count in order to preserve the details. I did a quick test render with 1300 samples and that looked fine to me, so that's what I went with. I tend to find that the default colour space in Blender is a little bit washed out, so I usually use the medium high contrast, but for this scene I went for full high contrast. All of my other settings were pretty much left to default and then I just hit the render button. The final render came out looking like this. 
Like always, the same file for this tutorial will be available on my Patreon. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.